I love the 1250 GS. It's really one of the ultimate bikes out there. The end game bike for many because of its rideability, all of the tech that you want. You can pretty much go anywhere with it. And it's also probably the most comfortable thing on two wheels. However, all of that comes at a pretty steep price for some. So, will its younger sibling, the F850 Rally, be a good alternative for those who are a little bit more budget conscious? Let's find out in this episode of Beyond the Ride. is powered by 853cc water-cooled inline two-cylinder engine that puts down 95 horsepower and 92 newton meters of torque. The stopping power is provided by dual 305 millimeter discs up front and a single 265 millimeter disc single piston floating caliper for the rear. Both, of course, are Brembos. Keeping bumps at bay, you get an upside-down telescopic fork up front and a dual swing arm hydraulically adjustable preload and adjustable damping for the rear. Now for the wheels and tires, you get 21 inches cross spoke wheels up front, 90 by 90, while the rear is size 17, 150 by 70. Now I've gone on record to say that I'm not a fan of the looks of the BMW GS. However, after I used the uh, 1250 GS for about a couple of weeks, I kind of loved the bike so much that the looks grew on me. And if you look at this, it's just like it's baby brother. So. Yes, if I had not taken the bigger GS out uh, for, for, for an extended period of time, I probably still wouldn't like the looks. But because I, I rode it around and because I got to appreciate it a little bit more, I kind of like it now. Of course, it's got LEDs all around and it also does have DRLs. And uh, the windscreen, well, this is the stock version, but you can get a bigger one or one that is also adjustable. There are a couple of things that this bike does not have that are options when you actually purchase it. It does not come with a quick shifter. Also, there is no cruise control on this version. Now, those are the two things that I probably would include, or if I was to buy this bike, I probably would get those options uh, because I think those, those are um, pretty good upgrades for any bike of this, uh, of this magnitude. Now, something that I also would probably consider changing would be the foot pegs. They are a little bit small for me, um, or maybe I've just gotten used to bigger foot pegs like they do have, like it has on the 1250. And clearly what you don't see here is the, well, what you do see here and what you don't see on the 1250 is, well, this has a chain, the other one doesn't. So, which means that's gonna be a little bit more maintenance, uh, well, of course, to maintain the chain as compared to the 1250. So clearly it's not a boxer engine and the boxer engine is one of the reasons why I love the 1250. But that doesn't mean this is a bad bike because this engine is actually really, really good. Now, but what that does is put a little bit more of the weight up here. And that's something to consider because with the boxer engine, the center of gravity is quite low, which, which makes the, the 1250 really maneuverable in low speeds. This one, the weight is a little bit higher. So that's something to consider uh, when you are going to be purchasing this bike. It has a 12 volt socket right about here, of course, uh, for your gadgets. And it does have the same TFT screen as most other modern BMW motorcycles, which work really well. I mean, among all the TFT screens out there, this is, might be my favorite one. And it's quite intuitive when you toggle through the menu and you can also control the um, the riding modes here. There are four different riding modes, including rain, road, dynamic, and enduro. The curb weight of the bike is 229 kilograms, which is on the heavy side. Now, think about it. The 1250 weighs close to 250 kilograms, and it's just so much bigger. The fuel tank capacity is 15 liters, and you can get up to 23 kilometers per liter, which is actually really impressive. The seat height of the standard 850 is at 860 millimeters, which is actually pretty high. Now this has got the lower suspension and lower seat, which you can get at the dealership. And at five foot six, that's what it looks like. That is the situation with a 764 millimeter inseam as well. Not bad whatsoever. 
Let's do a quick sound test. The seating position is just like that of most ADV bikes, neutral and very comfortable. The handlebars are nice and wide, which makes me feel that I can get good leverage and control of the machine. The seat is very comfortable, maybe not as comfortable as the 1250, but still very, very good. Even Jack, who is a bigger, heavier rider than I am, didn't have complaints about the comfort. And he usually complains about everything. For me, the wind protection is fine. I know you can get a bigger windscreen as an option if you choose to, but for me, the stock one works. I don't feel the wind hitting my head at all. But maybe for taller riders, they would want a bigger windscreen. It rides very well and the power delivery is excellent. It's chill and won't surprise you. But when you want to, this thing does have some very, very good pull. Like most ADVs, riding on the highway is awesome. This is no exception. It's great on the highway. I wouldn't mind putting on a lot of miles on this bike. Super comfortable and would be great to take on long rides. Plus, of course, it's very fuel efficient as well. It does have a bigger front tire than the 1250, which tells you that this is a little bit more off-road oriented than its bigger sibling. And I can tell you on some light fire roads, it's great. There I say, might actually be better than the 1250. The 1250 is a little too smooth off-road, at least for me. I think you would want a little bit more feedback and this gives you that, so yeah. I would rather take this off-road than the 1250. Also, when you drop the bike, not if, but when you drop the bike on some light trails, this might be a little bit easier to pick up. You do have to be a little bit more careful at lower speeds. Now, the 1250, because of its low center of gravity, it's easier to maneuver on lower speeds, but it is a little bit wide when you filter. This one, it's kind of uh, the opposite, right? It's top heavy, so you, when you're filtering, you just have to be extra careful. And also, this does get a little bit warm in uh, city traffic, which I'm a little bit surprised about because the 1250, I don't really feel the heat in that motorcycle, but this one, I felt it a little bit more. When you think about the competition of this MC, middleweight ADVs like the KTM 790-890, the Tiger, uh, the middleweight Tiger, I should say, the Tenere 700, the Versus, the V-Strom, those are probably what come to mind. It's in very, very tough competition because those are all excellent motorcycles. But this can somewhat hold its own. And BMW GS, of course, they have their own fan base. Now compared to the 1250, this feels more like a motorcycle. The 1250 kinda is more of a massive scooter, which honestly is a good and somewhat bad thing at the same time. I think this is actually a very good choice for intermediate riders who want to get into the ADV world. It's an efficient motorcycle that does a bunch of things really, really well. So in conclusion, well, the 1250 is still a much better motorcycle, but is it twice the bike? Well, maybe not. This is a very solid motorcycle on its own. It's got pretty good technology. It's got a lot of good safety features. It rides very well on different terrains. It's also very, very comfortable. I mean, on its own, this is a solid choice. Even if you weren't thinking about getting the 1250 GS, this would be a nice way to enter the world of adventure riding. The F850GS starts at 795,000 Philippine pesos. That, my friends, is a really good deal. For more information about this bike and other MCs out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Rafin. Hope you guys enjoyed going beyond the ride.